But it left the evangelicals frustrated. And they've been trying and trying ever since to find a way around <laughs> that little bit of the American Constitution. In the 70s and 80s, they started saying, but OK, we can't go into the schools and preach religion, but we can go in the schools and preach our own kind of science, creation science. Well, that again was fought up to the Supreme Court. And in 1982, the Supreme Court said, what you are describing is not science, it is religious ideology. And you can see that this was frustrating for them because outside academia and outside the schools, they have been making great gains and they are feeling quite triumphalist. The latest census suggested that 150 million Americans don't believe in Darwin. They had friends in high places like Bush and Palin. And in some parts of America, the school boards, although they can't actually get them in to say Darwin was wrong, and they didn't succeed in having stickers put inside all the copies of, of books about Darwin saying, you don't have to believe this is only a theory. But they were able in many parts of America and are able to make it so uncomfortable for anybody who goes in and talks about evolution that a lot of the school boards, for the sake of a quiet life, have stopped putting it on the syllabus altogether. So you can see why a lot of people on the other side are getting alarmed and saying we've got to do something to stop this. Mostly, they have con confined themselves, until recently, to America. And there's a lot of money going into it. In Cincinnati, in 2006, they built a huge, huge creation museum. And it cost 27 million pounds to put up. And if you go into this museum, you will learn that the world was created 10,000 years ago. And if you find this hard to fit into some other manifestations in the heavens and earth, they will tell you, well, the reason for this, why it looks fishy, is that the speed of light used to be 300 times as fast as it is now. But later on, God decided he'd better slow it down a bit. And they have got a gravestone there with Darwin's picture on and saying, RIP, this is the end of the evolutionary theory. But they are now, it seems to me, beginning to move over here. As they have every right to do, we send our missionaries all over the world. And you probably had Mormon missionaries coming two at a time, knocking on your door. Well, now the, uh, the um, Emmanuel City Technical Technological College opened in Gateshead, and they put a lot of money into it. And they invited the National Creationist Conference there. And they are spending a lot of money printing DVDs and giving them free to schools throughout this kingdom. And they say, but what we are teaching now is not creationism. No, you shouldn't call it that. What we are teaching now is intelligent design. And it's purely and strictly scientific. And they complain that people won't take us seriously. They, they think that the idea is so misconceived that it's not even worth refuting. Well, I can sympathize with them that because I've been on the receiving end of that situation very often and I can see that it's very annoying. So I have not refused to listen to them. I've been reading books by Behave, that's how he announced himself, and Dembski, and Meyer, and Woodward, 
And so I think I know what they're on about. The message they are bringing is that evolution can't explain everything. There are things it hasn't succeeded in explaining, and we believe they never will succeed in explaining it. And since if there's anything that Darwinism fails to explain, then the whole thing collapses. You don't have to believe anything they say. And they are interested in phrases like irreducible complexity. They say, you can look at some things in life, and it's so complex that it's impossible to believe that this happened a little bit at a time, as Darwin says. Um, five or ten years ago, they, they had one favorite example, which was the eye. They said, the eye couldn't have evolved a little bit at a time, because it has got the iris and the cornea and the retina and all that. It would have to be created in one piece. Well, that didn't work very well because the Darwinians joyously plunged into that and produced detailed explanations because they discovered Hox gene by that time, exactly how an eye can develop from just a little light detecting spot on original thing and how it gets a dent in it and they have got a thoroughly convincing account of how the eye has evolved in octopus and insects and mammals independently several times. And you don't have to take my word for it that they had a convincing case. You only have to note that the creationists have stopped talking about the eye and in their latest books they don't mention it. They have now got something else to put instead of the eye. They have discovered a thing called the bacterial flagellum. And this is that in a single cell thing like, like the bacterium, you can look at it under a microscope and you think it's simple, but it's not. It's tremendously complex and it's got this special little organ in it that can work like an outboard propeller and it can make them move the thing and they can show you pictures of this and everybody is stunned and say, yes, that's terrifically complex. That must have been made. And they say, this sh spells, shows where Darwin went wrong because the Darwinists say that in the beginning there were simple single cell things like this bacterium and we, since then, we have got more and more complex. But, they say, <coughs> right at the beginning, it wasn't simple. Right at the beginning, it was as complex as all that. I think this is based on a misunderstanding. Because Darwinists do not say that we are all descended from a bacterium with a flagellum like the one you're showing us. What the Darwinists are saying is that Four billion years ago, there were replicators. And 3.5 billion years ago, there were bacteria. And later on, these evolved into eukaryotic ones and algae, which gave rise to the plant, plants and trees and flowers, and others which gave rise to animals. But the original ancestor we share was not a bacteria with all these um, accessory, <coughs> it was a single, simple cell animal that later developed. After all, those bacteria, with all their little uh, accessories, they have had 3.5 billion years to specialize in doing what they're doing, and we have had much less time to specialize in being mammals. So you'd expect that they'd be pretty good at it by this time. <coughs> 